evening, everybody. Uh, we appreciate your presence with uh, Tony Sharks talking next door. It's, it's uh, very good of you. Um, you would have heard this morning already uh, that, that the labor market is central to, to uh, inequality in general, and you would have heard that, uh, especially Marcelo Neri, that... Um, that education at the end of the day and, and, uh, and people, capacitating people, is central to allowing them to participate in, uh, in the labour market. So there's a very active discussion about the, the role of education in driving earnings inequality, which is in turn very important in overall inequality. And this paper of ours seeks to make uh, a small contribution uh, in, in that area. Uh, let me acknowledge my, my co-authors, Professor David Lamb from the University of Michigan and um, Arden Finn, uh, a, a Soldru researcher. Okay, I'm battling a bit here. Oh, there we go. So we have two countries that are <clears throat> highly unequal in general and as we heard this morning, Brazil has turned that around, and the role of education in that reduction is, is very interesting. Uh, and then we have South Africa that hasn't quite turned it around yet. Um, both countries also have very high levels of education inequality. And, and so it's a fascinating uh, that they really do present very good case studies. Um, so education is highly unequal in both. There are very strong relationships always between schooling and earnings. So in this paper, we, we just take a hard look at that, um, which is a little bit away from the big debates about uh, trade and, and inequality and uh, um, you know, skill bias, technical progress and inequality. But at the end of the day, these relationships always sit at the heart of all of those theories. So this is really an important issue. So we look at what has happened to the distribution of education in both countries and what has happened to the returns um, and how these two factors affected uh, earnings inequality. That's the link then, okay? Uh, we want to, to link the two. And, um, and then we do some theory to try and make some progress on this, to try and understand the fact that the very same expansion in, in education and the narrowing of inequality in Brazil in the 1990s was disequalizing. In the 2000s, it's equalizing. How do we make sense of, of things like that? Um, so the theory, we try and following uh, Francois Boyguignon's uh, uh, whatever encouragement to go back to theory, we try and do a bit of this. So quick, quick look at uh, education in the two countries. Let's start with South Africa, the, w the working age population. Uh, you can see that mean years of schooling have gone up very strongly. A major achievement of the post-apartheid period is this increase in schooling from, on average, from about eight years up to just over ten. Uh, at the same time, the, the uh, standard deviation of schooling okay, has declined somewhat, but the standard deviation is not such a good measure of inequality. A better measure, because it normalizes the standard deviation, is the coefficient of variation and, and so what, what you can see is an increase in average years of schooling and a very strong decline in, earn, in education inequality. Here's Brazil. Uh, we, we downloaded data. It's very, very available. One of the great things about both South Africa and Brazil is there's very good data produced uh, at, and put in the public domain. So our Portuguese isn't great. We battled a little bit, but David Lamb, unfortunately, is way better than the rest of us. So what do we see? We see an increase in mean years of schooling, and that was, uh, Marcello Neri was talking about that this morning. Um, but notice from where it starts. It's way lower than South Africa. It's quite interesting, right? It's starting at just, just below four, uh, a bit further back, okay, granted, 1976, and then going up to just over eight, eight and a half in 2012. So increasing mean years of schooling, but also very strongly declining inequality in schooling. 
So both countries share these features. What about earnings? We're going to look at the link between the two. Well, let's get the story straight. And uh, if, if you have any questions about the South African data, I'll refer you to one of the other presenters, Martin Wittenberg, but, uh, especially if they're hard questions. But uh, uh, if you look at the... This is then the, the inequality of those in the, who are earning positive earnings in the labor market using a very nice uh, data set produced by, by Martin's unit called the Post-Apartheid Labor Market Series, um, publicly available. And basically you can see that the, the, uh, the inequality of earnings hasn't, hasn't increased dramatically. There's some funny little bumps in here that I refer you to Martin about, uh, around about the, the late 90s, but has, has gone, gone up a little bit. That's, that's the story. But basically is, is pretty flat. We give you a few measures, the Gini coefficient, we give you a, a, a tile measure as well. And then we include the unemployed just, just to make a point that a big part of the South African labor market are, are zero earners. But this is the last time we make the point. For the rest of the paper, we focus on those in employment. Uh, but it, it is always worth noting in South Africa we've got the, the massive number of people who are, wish they were earning something. What's happened to, uh, to earnings in, in Brazil? <coughs> Sorry, a, a quick... Often when, you, when you're looking at earnings inequality, you look at uh, the variance of log earnings. And so this is just another measure. It tells you basically the same story as to what's happened in, uh, in South Africa. The usefulness of the variance of log earnings is then when you put it on the left-hand side of an earnings function, um, you, you, can, you can see how much of the, the earnings, the inequality you're explaining. <coughs> Here's Brazil. So earnings inequality. You can see the strong decline, as we heard this morning, in, in earnings inequality over time, especially uh, kicking in, in the, from 2000 onwards. Similarly, the, the, the variance of log earnings tells the same story. The reason why we're telling you this is because we're going to use the variance of log earnings quite intensively in, our, in the paper. So it is a measure of inequality, um, and, uh, and it's very useful, as I said, because if you've got a standard earnings function, it's what you've got on the, on the left-hand side. <coughs> just just for, for interest, you'll note, when we talk about explained variance over total variance, this would be then, the, the, in an earnings function, how much of the variance, how much of the inequality are you explaining and it's quite interesting and notable that in both South Africa and Brazil, you, you're explaining an increasing share of the overall inequality uh, in an earnings function. Okay. So, having said that, let's then uh, put down an earnings function. This, if this is log earnings, you explain earnings by schooling. So, we, it's, a, it's a way of connecting then these two things that we've got in play here. Schooling and and earnings, and then uh, inequality of schooling and inequality of um, earnings. So how do you connect? This is just schooling and earnings, log earnings. You can, if you take then the, the variance of log earnings, which is a measure of inequality of earnings, using this equation, you, you do actually get an expression where this is the inequality of schooling and uh, this then is the returns to schooling squared. Uh, so this expression then maps education inequality and changes in that through to earnings inequality with what's going on in education itself and then the returns to education map in there. And then that's just the, the error term. And there's a section at the beginning of the paper in which we reflect on this a little bit, because even that turns out to be incredibly useful. Just talking about the returns as if there's one return or an average return across all years of schooling. You can see, for example, that if there's an increase in the return to education, it increases uh, earnings inequality. 
through, through uh, the beta squared here. But also, and we explore this in a little bit more detail in the paper, if uh, it's quite possible to narrow earnings inequality, uh, sorry, to narrow schooling inequality, but for earnings inequality to go up. There's no necessary relationship between narrowing what's going on in the schools uh, in terms of inequality and uh, earnings inequality. Okay, so that's fine. Maybe useful. If it is, you can download the paper and read it. But we aren't that interested in average returns to schooling. A lot of the arguments this morning and a lot of the arguments all the time are about changes in returns to different years of schooling across the distribution. The skills twist arguments, for example. So what can we do about that? Well, you can just, you can just expand, in a sense, that expression that I had to cover that. Now your log earnings are explained by years of schooling, literally. So this is a one, if, you're, if you have 10 years of schooling, zero otherwise, and then there's another, another I here, will, another J will be if you have 11 years, etc. And then that's the return to that specific uh, year of schooling. You can move it to an inequality analysis in exactly the same way. Uh, and you've got the same expression here as you had before, for, but now it's for that particular year, summed, but then you've also got a covariance term. A little bit of math in the paper. If you just recognize that, that the schooling thing, if it's a 1-0, it's basically a proportion, so the math turns out to be quite interesting and useful. And I guess this is the key uh, finding in the paper. If you then take the derivative of that expression with respect to uh, the return to one year of schooling, you get the following. So two times P1. What's P1? P1 is the, the proportion of people in that uh, year of schooling, with that year of schooling in the labor market. And then uh, this is the difference between the mean earnings for those with that year of schooling and mean earnings. So this, this turns out to be fascinating. It turns out to be like a little anchor point that's going to help us resolve this issue of, well, how come sometimes, uh, you know, increases of schooling, lower earnings inequality, sometimes they don't. We're saying it depends on whether your, the, the, the years of schooling, the, the earnings for those years of schooling are b below or above the average um, earnings. So if you're below you're going to lower inequality. So in other words, if, uh, if the earnings to those with eight years of schooling are below uh, the average earnings in the labor market, that's going to reduce uh, inequality. Whereas if the earnings are above, that's going to increase inequality. So this turns out to be a sort of an anchor statistic that, that's quite interesting. So inequality decreases if the schooling level has earnings below mean log earnings. And on the other hand, inequality increases if the schooling level has earnings above mean log earnings. And the magnitude of the change depends on two things. Depends on this distance here and then the size of the group. Great. And then we also do, uh, I won't spend too long on this, but obviously then what about if you change the size of the group? The, the, the thing we talk about in the paper is if you shift some people, you give them one extra year of schooling, what does it do to the distribution? And it just depends on the same gaps, but between the two groups that you're talking about. So those gaps remain important. And we show these results in terms of the variance of log earnings, but actually it turns out to be that that's gen just generally true. Okay, great, you say. Is there any return on this investment of ours in staring at some equations? Well, hopefully. Let's see. This is Brazil. So we're looking at mean education and the education of mean log earnings. Maybe I should just say something about, uh, to link you back to that. Obviously then, uh, this, this difference in earnings turns back to two key schooling differences. What's the average year of schooling associated with that, that mean earnings? And what's the average level of schooling associated with that group? 
well, we know, we know what that group's uh, schooling is. So is the schooling of that group, how does it relate to the, the average level of schooling associated with mean uh, log earnings? Okay, so that's why we plot on this graph mean years of education for earners. So this is just the mean years of education of those in the labor market. Right? And you can see it's Brazil. It's very low early on, and it rises up there, slightly higher than the mean years of education in the population. Then this is the education level associated with mean log earnings. So this is the education level associated with Y bar in, in the economy. And you can see, here it is, and it's below the mean years of, um, of schooling of those in the labor market, meanders along here, and by the time we get to this, it crosses uh, the distribution. So, this is almost a test to see if you've been following along, seeing if I've been doing a good enough job, really. This is, this is pretty low. Uh, so, that would imply the, these mean earnings in the labor market are, 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 are pretty low. And so, actually, in this period, what happened in Brazil was that there was this expansion, this increase in education. So, uh, an improvement here in these years. But this is telling you that in these periods here, the improvement would have been disequalizing, would have, would, have, would have increased the inequality of earnings. Whereas here, whereas here you're pushing in the, in the Brazilian realms, five, six, seven years, those levels of education are clearly below that mean earnings level there, and it becomes equalizing. And that's what we saw in Brazil. Right? That was the story we were told, uh, interestingly, uh, this morning. So mean schooling actually rose from 4.5 to 9. Um, the crossover actually indicates that there's some change in the, in the, uh, the structure of schooling and, and the structure of the returns to schooling. So this is the punchline, really. Increases in returns to schooling in grades 5 to 8 would have been disequalizing up till about 2000, and then would have been equalizing thereafter. So there is this conundrum that's been bothering people. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying this is the solution, but it, it gives you some traction on that. What about South Africa? Well, in, uh, in South Africa, here's the, the mean years of education of the positive earners. And then, given the nature of the South African labor market, who's been hired in, etc. Here's then the, uh, the, mean le the education level of mean log earnings. So this is the benchmark education level. If you're below this uh, and you push more people in there or you increase the returns associated with these levels, that's equalizing. If you're above it, it's disequalizing. And it's quite high. But nonetheless, I guess we're stretching the point here a little bit for effect. But so we're looking at this range here, which is very close to that mean. So if you're below, if you're below I guess it's marginally equalizing, but basically we're saying in the 9 to 11 range, uh, increases in returns would have been disequalizing or, not, or not have no impact at all. They're very close to the actual means that you're talking about. But by the time you get up here in the 2000s, they would be strongly equalizing. The problem in South Africa is that we've had a collapse in those returns, as you know. Well, you may know. In the 9 to 11 years of schooling, there's been a complete collapse in those returns. So that's bad news because it would have been equalizing to have increases in returns to those years of schooling now. And yet what's happened is a huge collapse in those returns. So it's just equalizing. So that collapse in returns to those uh, at the bottom where all these earners are has, has been disequalizing. Okay. Uh, um, j just, to, just to finish off then quickly. Um, that, was that a zero? Or, oh, good. Thank you. I got a two and then I got a zero straight away. So <laughs> just checking. Okay. Now, uh, we... we we show that with regard to log earnings. 
uh, and, the, and the, variance, uh, the variance of log earnings. And we also show it with regard to a tile indicator, but it's not such a trivial, it's not a generalized result yet. It's not so easy. But obviously, you can easily take data and, and do some simulations, small per perturbations uh, around the returns at each level of schooling, and you can see what happens. Okay, and you can even find a cutoff that divides equalizing from disequalizing uh, returns to schooling. Okay, it may not be a single line, but in South Africa, it turns out it is a line. So, last slide. We gave a 1% increase in the returns to schooling in South Africa, and then we looked at a number of measures of inequality of earnings, and that's then the, the line in our simulations in which it would have had no impact on, uh, on earnings inequality, and, um, and years of schooling down here. And you can see that in 1994, up here at the 10 years, Increasing, uh, giving a 1% one, 1 increase in returns to schooling at 10 years, 11 years, 12 years was actually disequalizing in South Africa on any measure. And obviously the tertiary was also strongly disequalizing. Uh, come 2011, you can see that by all measures, given the collapse in the returns to, to schooling at below 12 in South Africa, you can see they're all strongly equalizing. The negative means they would have lowered inequality in the simulation by any measure. And you can see the highly uh, disequalizing nature of the tertiary, uh, complete secondary and tertiary. Okay, so what have we shown? So schooling inequalities declined substantially over time in both South Africa and Brazil, but it didn't lead to decline in earnings inequality in South Africa and did in Brazil only after some time period. Uh, but obviously we have a, a strong change in the returns to schooling across the distribution, and in South Africa we've had that uh, collapse in everything below 12 years of schooling, complete secondary. Um, Brazil had smaller increases in returns at the top, in fact even some slight declines in more recent periods right up at the top of the distribution and strongly increasing returns in the middle. Um, so what we find is that increasing returns in the middle, certainly in Brazil, would have been disequalizing in the past and in South Africa, uh, but is now equalizing. So that's why inequality, in a sense, is coming down in Brazil, earnings inequality. Uh, and the problem is that we've had a collapse in those zones in South Africa, uh, and that's why earnings inequality isn't coming down. Thank you very much.